to teach, you have to tackle tricky words in a nonfiction text. Thank you, sir. So if you guys can remember when we started talking about nonfiction on Monday, I know that was like four days ago, but we talked about how one feature or one thing you might notice a lot in nonfiction texts is that there are re they're going to use vocabulary words um, that you probably don't know, right? Maybe you don't know what it means, or maybe you have a tough time reading it. I ran ac across a few of those that were hard when I was reading the chemical reactions chapters, right? Because that's not something I have a ton of background knowledge on. So when we come across those words, we have to figure out ways to either think about what they mean or just how to read them, right? Um, or use clues around them to figure out what they may mean. So we're going to do uh, talk about what are some things we should do when we, the steps we should take when we have this happen. Clay, can you read step number one? Stop where, wait, no. It's when to stop. Yeah, where, where is the word? Right, so we're going to stop and say, okay, where's the word in this text that I just had trouble reading? Go back and find it. Step two, CJ. Think what makes sense. Yeah, so you're going to stop and you're going to think about what could possibly make sense in that situation. Like, what would make sense for this word? What would it make sense that this word might mean? Or what would it make sense that this word might actually be? Corbin, can you read step three? Look how long the, the is the word. So you might stop and think, how long is the word? So um, let's say, for example, it was oh, I'm trying to a long science word that we came across in the chemical. Um, what did we say? Uh, what was decomposition, right? Decomposition was one we came across yesterday. So think about, okay, there's a lot of different parts to that word, and they may all mean something, right? And then number four, um, Michael, can you read number four? Listen how does the listen how does the word begin? Very good. So, like one thing you can do is listen to how the word begins and try to look for clues as to what the beginning of the word might mean. So, for example, decomposition. I know that D means like to take apart or not, and I know um, compose means to put something together. So, if I know that. D means like not or to take something apart and compose means put something together. I could come up and say, okay, decomposition must mean taking something apart or making something separated. If compose means putting them together, right? And compose is part of composition. So I took different pieces I knew within the word um, to figure that out. For example, yesterday, when you guys did word work, if you did it, um, you had some of the words like vaccinated was one of the words. Well, that's a long word right? But one of the earlier words you did was vaccine. So if we know that vaccine means like when you get a shot to help like help fight like a flu, like a flu shot is a flu vaccine. If I know a vaccine is a shot I get to help me fight a disease, then I know I can put together and think, okay, maybe vaccinated means that I've gotten the vaccine to help me by knowing, using part of the word that I already know. So you can also use part of the word that you already know to help you determine what it may mean. The other thing is sometimes if you just look around, it's not on our chart, but if you just look around, like some of those bold words that are important, sometimes you can find um, information in the text that tells you what the word means, right? So it might say like decomposition in might be a bold word. And then underneath that, it, it just says decomposition is the process of and give you the actual definition. So we're going to play a little game today to help practice context clues called guess the covered word and the way guess the covered word works is that it is the certain words in the text are covered and i'm going to read it out loud and i'm going to let you guess what word you think is covered up we're going to read through it once and i'm going to you're going to get two guesses so you're going to take your whiteboard and split it in half for guess one and guess two so i'm going to pull my whiteboard out and show you what i mean so you're going to take your whiteboard 
and you're gonna draw a line straight down the middle like this. If you look at my camera, you can see like this. All right, and then you can see there's one, two, three, four, five words in this. So you're gonna number one, two, three, four, and five on both sides. So you can guess what the word is on both sides. All right, hang on, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a second so I can make sure everybody can see my example here. All right, so if you look, if you can see mine, I have my chart and I have the numbers one, two, three, four, five on one side, and then one, two, three, four, five on the next side. So let's say, for example, my covered word was, Mr. Hoffman really loves to play, and your first guess was golf, right? Because that word was covered up. You would write golf on this side on number one. Then when we read it through the second time, I wrote, Mr. Hoffman really loves to play, and I uncovered the first letter and it was a B, you might change that guess to what? Baseball. Baseball. So then you would write baseball on number one on the other side, the second time through. All right, does that make sense? So you should have one through five on both sides. We're gonna read it through. You're gonna use the clues around the words to try to guess them. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. The first one example we're doing as just practice is difficult because it's scientific words, all right? Because it's from the chemistry book. The um, second time, the second one I'm gonna let you do on your own after we've practiced is a little more fourth grader friendly. So it's not quite as difficult, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. The first one says, when we combine blank, we wanna know what blank. That totally random, you can guess whatever you do. Just know this is examining properties in chemistry. So the first one is when we combine blank, we want to know what blank. So make your guesses for number one and number two. And this is completely random and it's difficult, I know. So I'm gonna go ahead and say like for my first guess, I'm gonna say when we combine chemicals, we want to know what reacts just because i know we've been working with chemical reactions i'm not saying that's right i'm not saying that needs to be your guess i'm saying that's what i wrote down for number one and two on mine all right give me a thumbs up when you're ready to go to the next sentence because you've got your guesses down for one and two i'm going to give you about 30 more seconds to write down your guesses for one and two and I should put it out, I am not in any way, shape, or form expecting you to get these correct, all right? It's just, can you use the clues around it to make a good guess? That's what we're practicing. There are plenty of words you could fill in there. I have two that I know I wrote down are probably not correct, but I'm making a guess. All right, next sentence says, we get this data by observing and blank. So I wrote down the word recording. I don't say, because I think you observe and record result, results. That's the last one I'm gonna tell you what I wrote down. Then it says, you might note that a mixture is pink in blank. You might note that a mixture is pink in That's a good observation. But would it mean more if you knew the colors of the original substances? If they were white and red, pink is no surprise. But if they were white and blue, it's an exciting result. To make sense of blank, we need to understand individual parts first. That's why we measure and observe before and after. To make sense of blank, we need to understand individual parts first. 
That's why we measure and observe before and after. So one thing I will give you a clue for is when we read it all the way through, you might see clues in the words at the bottom that apply to the words at the top. So when we read back through it and you see the first letter, it might be a good idea to look at some of the other clues in the text below, right? Because I have a feeling some of the words we might need to use are in those words down lower. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go back through and this time I'm gonna show you just the first letter of the word, all right? So that first sentence for one and two is, when we combine blank, and it starts with the letter S. When we combine blank, we want to know what blank starts with a CH. When we combine blank, we want to know what blank, but that's an S and a CH. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds and we're going to go to the next one. So you should be writing this on the other side, right? On the other side where you're making your second guess. So you should have the five guesses. Everybody show me your whiteboards or your papers really fast. I'm going to make sure we're all doing it. Thank you, Clay. Well, uh, Norma Jack or whatever your name was, you need you need to be writing it down. Norma. Norma Mac. Uh, I have a lot of people who I'm not seeing. So show me your whiteboard, y'all. Show me the, or your paper that you're that you are participating in writing these down. The guesses. Thank you, Jay, Denise, and Cynthia, and Ania. I can see yours. Guadalupe. Thank you. I can see yours. Alex J, kinda, you gotta make sure you, you have, should have a guess for three, four, and five, right? In the first side, we haven't gotten there on, yeah, on the second side. All right, I'm gonna slow down. I'm gonna go back the first time through. All right, you already have a first and second guess for the first time, or for the second time, for the first two words, I mean. Oh my gosh, the first two words, you have already seen the first letter or two letters if it's a combined sound. We're going to go back and I'm going to give you a second opportunity right now to write down your guesses for the third, fourth, and fifth word in your first guess group. All right. So number three is we get this data by observing and blank. That should be number three on your first guess side. We get this data by observing and blank. I'm going to give you one minute to guess a word. Miss Weibel numbered them to help you realize which one goes where. All right, number four says you might note that a mixture is pink in blank for number four. You might note that a mixture is pink in blank. I'm gonna give you one minute to write down your guess. Are you supposed to um, reveal us the first letter? I'm going to. I will, Jay, but we've had some people who didn't write anything down the first time through, so I'm giving them a second chance to do it. So that was number four. Then we're going to go number five. That's a good observation, but it would mean more if you knew the colors of the original substances. If they were white and red, pink is no surprise. But if they were white and blue, it's an exciting result. To make sense of blank, that's number five, we need to understand individual parts first. That's why we measure and observe before and after. To make sense of blank, we need to understand individual parts first. That's why we measure and observe before and after. I'm gonna give you one minute to write down your guess for number five. What you think that word might be. Then we're gonna go back and do our second time through.
All right, now we're gonna go back up to the top. So number one and two, you're writing down your second guess. And this time you know the first letter or the first combination of letters for the word. So number one and two are when we combine blank that starts with the letter S, we want to know what blanks with the letters CH. That's one and two. I'm gonna give you one minute to make the guess. Again, look down here and look and see if there's any clues lower in the text that might help you guess those words. Oh, 30 more seconds, we're gonna move on to number three. Again, I told y'all, this one's pretty hard. The next one's not as hard as this one. So if you can tough it out through this one, you should be in good shape on the next one. I'm proud of you for trying. Number three says, we get this data by observing and blank. And the first letter is a letter M. By observing and blank. And the first letter is a letter M. Let me give you one minute to write down your guess. Thirty more seconds. All right, ready? Number three, or number three, or four, sorry. It says, you might note that a mixture is pink in blank, and it starts with the letter C. Pink in blank, and it starts with the letter C. And number five, we're gonna read the rest. That's a good observation, but would it mean more if you knew the colors of the original substances? If they were white and red, pink is no surprise, but if they were white and blue, it's an exciting result. To make sense of blank, starts with the letter M. To make sense of blank, we need to understand individual parts first. That's why we measure and observe before and after. Again, number five, to make sense of blank, starts with the letter M. We need to understand individual parts first. That's why we measure and observe before and after. Oh, wow. Alrighty, we're gonna go through and show you the words. It is your job to check on your own and see if you got them. But before we do that, can you show me your whiteboard so I can see who did the activity and I can get points for. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Ania and Michael and Corbin and Yaj and Alejandro and Cynthia and Denise and Alex J and Jonathan. And Yaj, I meant Jay, that's you. Your name says Yaj. All right, here are the answers. See if you got yours right. When we combine substances, 
See that clue of original substances was down here lower in the paragraph. When we combine substances, we want to know what changes. We get this data by observing and measuring. You might note that the mixture is pink in color. That's a good observation. But what would it mean more if you knew the colors of the original substances? If they were red, white, and red, pink is no surprise. But if they were white and blue, it's an exciting result. To make sense of mixtures, we need to understand individual parts first. So that's why we measure and observe before and after. Those are the words. All right, here's go ahead and clear, leave your numbers on there and go ahead and clear the other sides. This next one has six, so you'll need to make a number six at the bottom. All right, and I, like I said, these are not quite as difficult as the one we just did. Because this is about playing chess on the computer. And we all are probably more familiar with chess and computers than we are with chemical reactions and mixtures and solutions. All right, are we ready? Give me a thumbs up when you're ready to go. Clay is ready. CJ is good to go. Corbin's good. There are six on this one. Yage is ready to go. Yage. I guess Yage, because your name is Jay, so we say Yage. Alex J is ready to go. Yana, are you ready to go? Alejandro, big yawn. Jonathan, good to go. All right, here we go. Number one, computers play chess. Chess remains popular blank. Number one is computers play chess. Chess remains popular blank. I'm going to give you one minute. Popular blank. All right, there are 16 pieces on each side. Chess is a game for blank people. Number two, there are 16 pieces on each side. Chess is a game for blank people. Thirty more seconds. Checkmate means that the king cannot move without being taken by another piece. The board and the pieces can be in any two contrasting colors. Blank move in different ways. Number three is blank move in different ways. Thirty more seconds. Number three is blank move in different ways. Number four, computers sometimes beat blank champions. Number four is computers sometimes beat blank champions. Wait, we got to do what's on this? We got to read it? I'm trying to, yep, and you're trying to guess what words are covered up that you can't see. You're trying to guess what those words are. Okay. Number four is computers sometimes beat blank champions. Chess is played on a checkered board. It seems complicated at first. Each side has one blank, one queen, two knights, two bishops, two rooks, and eight Pawns. All right, I'll say that one more time. Number five, is chess is played on a checkered board, it seems complicated at first. Each side has one blank, one queen, 
two knights, two bishops, two rooks, and eight pawns. All right, last one. The board is usually black and white. The game ends when one of the kings is checkmated. Experts blank their game by learning special patterns or of moves. Chess is a very old game. All right, so I'll read that one more time. The board is usually black and white. The game ends when one of the kings is checkmated. Experts, experts blank their game by learning special patterns of moves. Chess is a very old game. You have 30 seconds for number six. All right, here comes the first letter of every word. So on the other side, you should be guessing on the, with the first letter. Computers play chess. Chess remains popular. Blank, and it starts with the letter T. Starts with the letter T. Chess remains popular. Blank, and it starts with the letter T. Chess remains popular. Blank. There are 16 pieces on each side. Chess is a game for blank people, and it starts with the letter T. Chess is a game for blank people, and it starts with the letter T. Number three, checkmate means that the king cannot move without being taken by another piece. The board and the pieces can be in any two contrasting colors. Number three, blank, starts with the letter P, can move in different ways. Blank, starts with the letter P, move in different ways. Number four, Computers sometimes beat blank champions. Starts with the letter H. Computers sometimes beat blank champions. Starts with the letter H. Starts with the letter H. Moving to number five, chess is played on a checkered board. It seems complicated at first. Each side has one blank, starts with the letter K. One blank, one queen, two knights, two bishops, two rooks, and eight pawns. Number five starts with the letter K. That's easy, I think it's K. And the last one, the board is usually black and white. The game ends when one of the kings is checkmated. Experts blank their game. It starts with the letter I. Experts blank their game by learning special patterns of moves. Chess is a very old game. You have 30 seconds for number six. This time, instead of just revealing them, I will give you the opportunities to say some of your guesses before the word is revealed to see if you got it correct. I think, like I said, I think this one's a little bit easier, a lot easier, actually. And some of you will probably get these this time. All right, anybody want to share their guess for number one? Computers play chess, chess remains popular, blank. Anybody, Jay, what is your guess? Today. That is correct. Chess remains popular today. Let me go ahead and erase the numbers, that way we can see the words in there. Chess remains popular today. Very good. There are 16 pieces on each side. Chess is a game for blank people, and it started with the letter T. Anybody have a guess they want to share? Guadalupe. Two. That is correct. Chess is a game for two people. Very good. Checkmate means that the king cannot move without being taken by another piece. The board and the pieces can be in any two contrasting colors. 
blank starts with the letter P, move in different ways. CJ, what's your guess? Pieces. That is correct. Pieces move in different ways. Computers sometimes beat blank champions. This is probably one of the harder ones. Computers sometimes beat blank champions. Starts with the letter H. Corbin. House. House champions, not a bad guess. Ania. Kyrie. Hard champions. Hard champions is a good guess. Anybody else have a different guess? Neither of those is correct. Both of them are good guess. CJ, what's your guess? Hand champions? The correct answer is human champions. Yeah, that was my next guess. Computers sometimes beat human champions. Chess is played in a, on a checkered board. It seems complicated at first. Each side has one blank. Starts with the letter K. Eric, are you raising your hand? Yes. One what? One king. One king. Yep, very good. And the next one's probably the other hard one. The board is usually black and white. The game ends when one of the kings is checkmated. Experts blank their game. Starts with the letter I. Kyrie. Insert the game. Oh, so we got to guess the word with the green over it? Yep. Okay. What'd you say they probably what their game, Kyrie? Insert their game. Insert their game by learning special patterns. Not a bad guess. That's not right. Anybody have a different guess? Anybody have a different guess? Alejandro, you have a guess? No? Yes? No? Okay. The answer is experts improve their game by learning special patterns of moves. Chess is a very old game. Do you guys like that activity? Yeah. Yeah, we do that a lot in person to help with context clues yeah. during word work and stuff. So, like, most of the ones we do are more like the second one. They're not as difficult as that first one. That first one was just stuff from that book we've been reading this week. So, I know that first one was pretty tough. But at least you had to get hard one out of the way first and made that you understand the second one a little bit better, right? Your job today, all right? Um, is you have an after nonfiction reading quiz on Canvas to do before math. And then if you have time, Lexia. Be back on at 1020. Yep. If you don't have time, then be back on at 1020. The way you get to that is, can you guys see, um, let's see. Oh, where'd my Canvas page go? What if we don't finish? Can you see, it's only six questions. I think you'll get it finished. Can you guys see my Canvas page now? Yes, okay. Friday, reading, and then after nonfiction reading. And so it's a quick quiz. I'll show you really quick. It says complete today's reading assignment. Be sure to answer and complete sentences. So if you preview it, it says read your nonfiction book for 20 minutes. True or false, nonfiction gives us information. What topic is your book about? You have to type in an answer and let us know. What are some interesting facts you learned while reading? Give us some of those facts. The book can help me in life by what? It can also help me because blank. You're gonna tell us how the book can help you. What questions do you still have about your reading topic? And then did you enjoy that text, that nonfiction book on Epic, why or why not? All right, so that's your job today. And we will see you in 1020 at 1020 for math. No small group today. If you go with Ms. Fleischer, you're welcome to go to her her zoom though because she may be able to help you if you're if she meets with you but other than that we will see y'all at 10 20 okay all right goodbye everybody bye bye